Hello and welcome back to part two of Is Your Organization Grant Ready? And or are you ready to hire a grant writer? We left off in part one with, um, with staffing. So now we'll move on to look at partnerships and what your potential funders want to know, what you need to know um, and evaluate internally, and also what your grant writer will need to know in preparing a successful grant application for you. So we want to make certain that we have documented every partnership any organizational partnerships and any programmatic partnerships. Make certain that we're documenting the term of the partnership and highlight all of the reciprocal activities for each partnership. So what does that mean in layman's terms? That just, just says, what are you getting out of the partnership and what are you putting into the partnership? I'll give you a quick example of a partnership that some may consider small, but um, it doesn't matter the size of the partnership because in actuality, you know, there is no small partnership. You can either scale up or scale down. Um, you could count that partnership towards, towards any um, in-kind support. You can leverage the partnership for more dollars and just all kind of great things we can do when we outline our partnerships and be very clear just about how connected we really are. Um, there's an example I'm thinking about offhand with a local food bank. And the food bank, of course, delivers to these different sites, uh, different food pantries around town, primarily to faith-based organizations. And what the faith-based organization is preparing to do is actually serve its clients who come to who come to the church by offering them just diet, dietitian and um, as a dietitian, <laughs> dietetic and nutritional classes and talk about how to, how to prepare foods. We're even looking at preparing cooking demonstrations and then distributing the food. Uh, they used to have a community garden nearby and how great would it be to fix your meals from a community garden and to also use any of the produce that's received from the local food bank just to make a larger feast, um, to create a healthier community not only biologically in our body and teaching us how to eat, but also in just bringing back those days of people coming together around the table to discuss issues and solve problems. So that's just one, one partnership I wanted to highlight. The other um, is, are you sharing data with any partners? So even if we think about the, the the recent example that I just used with the food bank, you know, what data could be shared? You look at the data that the program at the church will need to outline for its own purposes. But then of course they would need to return data back to the food bank, um, including probably, you know, how many boxes or bags were distributed, um, you know, ensuring perhaps that those who received those benefits fell within any type of income or household criteria. Um, you also want to include in this document, if there have been any challenges, identify any barriers to success, and then how you have overcome those challenges. All of this information is just, it's very telling to your, um, to your grant writer. I'm gonna, you can use the information internally, certainly, but it's telling to the grant writer so that they can, um, perhaps it will prompt additional questions or it will allow them to explain uh, to explain how this partnership has benefited the organization in ways that perhaps you haven't thought about. Great, so let's move on. This is a very big piece, uh, the financials. So you want to demonstrate sound fiscal management. So the following documents typically would demonstrate this to your, to your funder uh, directly, or if you're using a grant writer, to your grant writer so that they can position the, the corporation in the best light possible. Um, if there is an organizational budget, which of course there should be, then you want to have that on hand. But then you also want to have the particular program that you are fundraising for. Make certain that you have that programmatic budget and also outline how much of the program's budget is attributable to the entire organization's budget. You want to outline your summary of funds received and any funding requested to support the budget. So more, um, more often now I'm seeing funders who are asking who are asking about any additional pending applications that you have. You know, they're they're just asking you point blank 
um, is this proposal under consideration with any other funders? And I advise you just to be very transparent because just as the world and our cities and our communities are small, the world of fundraisers and funders and philanthropy is probably even smaller. So just make, so, make certain that, that you're being transparent um, and not submitting duplicate applications if you received funding from one source and trying to get the same funding from another. Please don't, don't be caught out there bad. Um, the other is a financial audit, if applicable. Now they will ask for a financial audit. I'll tell you my first experience with a financial audit. I could not get anyone to actually tell me how to get an audit. And then, you know, then I was finally informed that only over a certain dollar amount do you need an audit. However, if you don't have an audit and the proposal is requiring a financial audit, don't allow that to discourage you from applying. You want to still say something along the lines of describing what fiscal management processes you are using to ensure that the money is spent the way that you actually saying that it's going to be spent, that you're being responsible. That's really what they want to see. You may also want to include plans to conduct an audit if awarded and request funding to do so. And last but not least, many funders and your grant writers would like to see how your board contributes to the organization, whether that is monetary contributions or in kind. And they also would like to know their affiliations as well, but that's that's just extra. <laughs> so that is going to be it for, for part two. Stay tuned for part three. Our challenge for today or today's challenge is actually going to focus on partnerships. Um, you want to get a piece of paper, two columns, actually three columns. I want you to name the partner in the first column in your second column you want to name what benefits do you your organization or your clients receive as a result of this partnership and what benefits does the partner receive from you the organization or your clients and then that way you'll already have that done great so as always I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Until next time, keep doing, keep moving, and keep shaking things around in your communities. Peace. Working in community, no place I'd rather be. Working in community, lifting, loving, setting free. Don't know where.